G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza and this is a video tutorial on using the program Mischief. Now I've reviewed this program before, you can download it at the link in the description at madewithmischief.com uh, and use it for 15 day trial if you wanted to check it out. But uh, in the review I just kind of told my thoughts about it, I thought I'd just make a tutorial video just to show some some of the more po detailed points on how to use the program. So this is Mischief, it's an infinite canvas program meaning if I use the zoom tool I can zoom in as far as my heart desires and it won't in any way affect the image because it's a vector image as opposed to a raster or bitmap image that Photoshop might create. So up here in the menus it's all pretty uh, stock standard stuff with your preferences, you can change your crosshair and th things like that the smoothing, all that, uh, and the layers. And so otherwise, uh, there's not a huge amount in the menu. It's a pretty simplistic program that I find myself uh, brainstorming in. So rather than doing final refined pieces in it, I actually really enjoy doing character concept art and, and doing a lot of exploration because it's such a, a big sort of program where you can just go anywhere on the canvas. It's really useful. Uh, anyway, so going here, up here on the top right, we have our stock pens. Now, I tend to find personally that these are, are pretty... Uh, pretty much cover everything that I use the program for. So when I do my brainstorming and all that, I don't really find the need to customize the, the width and all that too much uh, because I'm using it for the brainstorming. So up here we have pencil. So I'm just gonna move uh, first of all, uh, keyboard shortcuts are an important thing to learn and the ones in here, Z is for zoom where you click and drag side to side to zoom in and out and then H is the hand tool where you can move yourself around the canvas. So this doesn't move the piece itself, it moves the camera as it were. So if I want to uh, do a bit of drawing inside this E here, I can just zoom in here and uh, position myself where I want to draw. And then I can select my stock pen, and so this is the pencil. So I'm just gonna select a black pencil, and if I wanted to sketch a head, I might just use it. It's quite a light sort of thing. It's all pressure sensitive and vector, which is really cool. And then just draw in the basic structure of the head. So it's pretty straightforward uh, in terms of the pen tools. Like I said, I tend to only use the ones that they have uh, provided but if you want to change it around and get custom sizes and stuff you can. So over here on the right we have a few options. We have the current pen selected and we can change the width and we can change the opacity. So if I want to make it really thick I can do that as well. So these are the stock pens. These are more of the rough sort of, they look a bit more like grey lead on paper, right? And uh, then the next one down we have these sort of airbrush style things and uh, if we wanted to do some airbrushing under a layer we have our layers over here on the bottom right so we're hit this little plus adds a layer and then i'm doing that okay so then my favorite part is this bit here this is the vector uh, paintbrush so it's similar to the flash one um, and you can also affect uh, select how much Kind of alterations you want to the smoothing and things like that in the preferences up in the menu and so you get the basic idea it's very similar to flash it's like a cross between flash and photoshop uh, like i said i use it for brainstorming and the reason I, I like it for that is because when i used to brainstorm when i say brainstorm like sketching up ideas i used to do it in photoshop but it used to annoy me because i didn't know what canvas size to pick or you know and you feel quite limited whereas this is really cool because you it, you feel like you're ready to explore in a program like this. So then we have highlighters, which is more solid color, which add upon each other as you add it. And then finally, calligraphy. And I actually really enjoy this calligraphy tool. Because everything feels like it looks really cool. <laughs> so if I do my signature, which looks like this, I don't know, it just, it's just kind of fun. So I'm gonna zoom out. So there you go, that is a basic grasp of how to use these brush tools here on the right. And like I said, you can change the size, the width and the opacity and everything like that. The other thing here is if you see this little paper thing, you can select that and you can actually change the background. So if I select this grid, I can choose different 
paper that I'm drawing on and it can set a bit of a different atmosphere within it. You can also do gridded or lined paper. Uh, and it's a bit of fun because it really feels like a sketchbook. You're really using this as if it were, you know, something that you're drawing at school or something like that. I tend to default to the white personally just because I guess that's habit. Then we have the color palette selector and we can save palettes here on the right, but also, you know, see here I can change the background because I have it currently set to paper. So if I want to save a color to the color palette, let's say uh, this this bronze color that I've used here, I can select the eyedropper and you can see how it's here in the current box. All I do is click and drag into one of these other saved boxes, one of these six available, and there it is right there, my bronze color. So if I want to use a different bronze, like a dark one to do sort of shading or something like that, and then I wanted to go back to the other bronze I had, I don't have to hit the eyedropper tool, I can just tap that color there on my palette. <clears throat> Then over here we have some tools, some basic selection. We have a uh, just the normal brush tool, which defaults up to these. We have a line tool, which is as you would imagine it, but it actually uses the brush setting of whatever line you're on. So if I wanted to use the, the marker, the highlighter, things like that. So the pencil, then we have the square, which as you can guess, draws a square. Same with the circle, you get the idea. And then we have, of course, whatever you call that thing, where you, <laughs> wherever you tap the line goes. So anyways, so that's a bit of fun. <clears throat> uh, same thing with this, except it doesn't have to finish off the thing, if that makes sense. I kinda am not making much sense. And then we have our basic tools. We have our zoom, which as I said, the shortcut is Z. And then we have H, which moves the canvas around. And then this is the rotate tool uh, and which if I select it and click and drag, we can actually rotate the canvas. So that's pretty nifty as well. Finally, we have this last thing which defaults to our default position on the canvas, which let's be honest, can be difficult to find when you zoom in all the way into a place like that. So we just hit that and all of a sudden we're home. Anyways, that's my basic look at it. Other than layer organization, which is pretty straightforward, you click the plus, you can uh, make it invisible by clicking the eye. If you've used Photoshop or Flash or any of uh, the art programs like GIMP or Painter or things like that, they're very common sort of settings and tools. And so it's pretty straightforward when you get down to the nitty gritty of it. There are less options in terms of uh, image um, kind of editing and stuff because it's not very based around bitmap and things like that but as a uh, sketching brainstorming tool as a infinite canvas tool it's got a lot of creative potential and uh, that's a basic guide as to how to use it so I hope you enjoyed my little tutorial there and until next time ladies and gentlemen I will see you later thanks for watching make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos you can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And remember to share any art, animation or game you make on Newgrounds.com. Until next time, see you later.